In the last presentation, we completed the basics of POS form and it is of two types. The first one is the canonical form. This is also called as the standard form and the second one is the minimal form. And I have taken one example here. The truth table is in front of you in which the function is y. There are two variables a, b, total four combinations and output depending upon this combination. We will try to find out the canonical pause form and the minimal pause form using this truth table in this presentation. So let's start with it. If you remember, I told you in pause form, if there is zero, the variable is written as a and if one is there the variable is written as a complement so we are going to use this concept here and the function y is written when it is low when it is zero because i have just told you we will write a when zero and a complement when a one and i'm writing y that's why i have to consider the zeros so there are two cases when the output is zero and for the first case you can see a is zero b is one so I will write A or B complement. B is 1. That's why I'm writing it as B complement. And for the last case, I have A complement or B complement. So this is simply the canonical pause form or standard pause form. Now we can use the Boolean algebra to minimize this canonical or standard POS form to the minimal one and I will use the distributive law. If you remember the distributive law, if we have A or B and A or C, then I can write it as A or B, C. In the same way, I have B complement as common. So I will write Y equals to B complement or A and A complement. A and A complement is definitely equal to 0. So finally, Y is equal to B complement. And this one is the minimal form. Okay. So this is how you have to solve for the pause form. And uh, every time in exam, they are not going to give you the truth table. This is we have already discussed in the SOP form. The truth table is not given always in the question. But they will use the representation of max term. I have already told you these two are the max terms they are the max terms and uh, we can represent max terms by the capital M so I will use capital M for representing the max term and uh, I will use subscript 0 because the decimal equivalent of 0 0 is 0 the decimal equivalent of 0 1 is 1 in the same way we have M2 and M three so let's see how the quotient comes in exam the function y is there they will use pi instead of summation they will use pi because we are finding out the sum of product we are having the sum and then we are having the product of these two sums so they will use pi for the product and in bracket we have m one comma m three we are using M1 and M3 because for M1 you can see the output is 0 and for M3 the output is 0 and we have to give this information to the student. You can also represent it as y equals to pi m in bracket 1 comma 3. If this is the information you can definitely get the information about the min terms and uh, you have y equals to summation small m. What is there in the bracket? 1, 3. So what is left? 0, 2. So 0, 2 is the mean terms for which the value of y is 1. So you have to just write the numbers that are not in the max term and that will be our mean term. So this is how you can find out the max term and mean term from the truth table. And uh, this is generally given in the exam as your question. I think this is all for this presentation. You now know what is the canonical form and what is the minimal form. But there is one very important thing that I want to discuss here. Why we are using this SOP form and POS form? If you see the SOP form, if you see the SOP form, in this the number of AND gate, the number of AND gate used is more as compared to the number of OR gate. Whereas in POS form, in POS form, 
the number of OR gate used is more as compared to the AND gate. Here you can see we are using two OR gates. A or B complement is implemented by one OR gate. A complement or B complement is, is implemented by another OR gate. So in total we have two OR gates and one AND gate. Whereas in case of SOP form, if I have A and B or A complement and B complement, we are using two AND gate. This is the first AND gate and this one is the second AND gate and only one OR gate. So if you want to use more AND gates, you use the SOP form. If you want to use the more OR gates, you use the POS form. So this was the brief introduction about the POS and SOP form in the last four presentations we have seen. And in the next presentation, I will solve few examples and they are very important. So see you in the next presentation.